New research just came out and statistically the UK has the lowest mind-body connection in the world. And somewhat unsurprisingly, the USA also scored pretty low too, though interestingly, it was an outlier compared to the rest of their results. Also, Australia scored the sixth lowest overall. And before we begin, I just want to make the point that just because you go to the gym, it doesn't mean you have a good mind-body connection. And in fact, I actually believe that the way in which we approach the gym could be destroying our mind-body connection. So in this video, I want to take a look at the data from this study, share some of the reasons why I think this is the case, and then offer some suggestions for how you could approach your training to improve your mind-body connection. So this study was conducted by Sapien Labs. It was their fourth annual study on mental health. Half a million people contributed from across 71 countries around the world. And basically, it was a 15-minute questionnaire done anonymously, and they marked themselves on a scale from 0 to 200 on these six categories and criteria for mental health. That is mood and outlook, drive and motivation, cognition, social self, mind-body connection, and adaptability and resilience. Now you can see here the UK ranking second bottom overall only to Uzbekistan. USA looking a lot better off in the top half somewhere, maybe about a third down. And you can also see here the top country was the Dominican Republic followed by Sri Lanka and Tanzania. Very interesting stuff. Now obviously I have to say this isn't proof or fact of anything per se. It's not data collected precisely from blood analysis or anything like that. It's people assessing themselves. So there's going to be cultural bias. <laughs> and, and it didn't surprise me in, in some ways that the UK came in so low as there is a certain pessimism culturally embedded in this country, whereas a country like United States maybe has a bit more of an optimistic <laughs> out outlook on life and overall in general, though possibly could be some self-deception in there as well. <laughs> Maybe that's my British pessimism speaking and maybe we're, we're both opposite ends of a spectrum and maybe we both truly lie pretty equally somewhere in the middle. Now looking a bit more deeply at the results, you can see the six categories at the bottom here and the UK actually scored bottom on adaptability and resilience with a score of 66 with South Africa being second bottom with 69 and drive and motivation scoring 59 with the second lowest being 66. So quite a long way down on drive and motivation for us in the UK. Somewhat worrying results. I mean, overall for the state of the world, to be honest. So onto the results then that I made this video for. Mind-body connection. You can see the UK scored 57, joint bottom with Egypt, which is interesting that of all people, maybe for them it's more to do with the history they have of themselves and they don't feel like they're living up to their own ancestral heritage of mind-body connection and whereas we just have not got any real heritage of a mind-body connection in the UK. Um, America you can see up here with 71 which was as I mentioned an outlier for them uh, as a result this was the highest result that was still in red with the USA with their mind-body connection. Now mental health overall I definitely have some views and opinions on it but more specifically my wheelhouse my passion the human body and mind-body connection is a big part of that that's why I wanted to make this video. So I want to discuss that in a bit more depth. And as I mentioned earlier, I believe that just because you go to the gym, it does not mean you have a mind-body connection. And in fact, going to the gym could be destroying your mind-body connection. I want to talk about that a little bit more. So let me just offer my beliefs on what the problems are, and then we'll go into some suggestions and solutions. So number one problem that maybe people can relate to more here is what I call the Goggins approach. This is one of what I believe could be the biggest thing, especially in culture today among young and middle-aged men approaching their body with this Goggins-like approach is incredibly destructive and harmful uh, to ourselves. It essentially, and I don't say this lightly, it's trying to treat our body like a slave, like telling the body what to do, demanding stuff from it. And when the body is speaking back, when the body is telling us, I don't want to go on, I can't go on, something hurts, I'm in pain. We're saying, no, shut up, I'm in charge. And that creates a disconnect, right? It is a mind-body connection, is a relationship. It's an equal relationship. It's not a 
commander and slave type situation as much as we want to believe that or think we can believe that when we have that approach that is what starts to destroy this so this type of approach where we're commanding our body to do what we want it to do we're in the gym we're chasing weights we're chasing numbers we're on the running track we're running 10ks marathons whatever it is chasing times chasing race completions chasing the next ultra marathon that i've not completed yet chasing image chasing how i look in the in the mirror when we're chasing something that's like this external goal with it stops us being present with our body which is severing the connection we're not honoring what it is that we do to get to that goal and not to mention that that goal is most often motivated not by loving motivations we, if we stop and ask ourselves why do we want that why do i want to have a, a bigger number on the bar but why do i want a faster time it's most often to prove something to someone else or to ourselves because we feel less than or unworthy in some way and we feel or have this belief that that might give us that worthiness just being really real with you here that is often when we really tune into what is my motivation for my training for me hitting the gym this goggins approach is always to try to prove something because we feel the opposite is true. So when you tune into that, that is the unloving motivation to try to prove something that we, to try to prove to ourselves the opposite of, of what we really believe that we're sad about inside. It's not a loving motivation rather than, for me, it's like the body is a beautiful gift and we'll get into that in a little bit. Let me just break these down. But basically, to sum that up, if our motivation is unloving, it is going to be destructive right that's a spiritual law spiritual law right there two and when i say spiritual law i mean that's a law that is more concrete than physics like we think of physical laws like gravity something like that spiritual laws are more just so you know more concrete than that as much as we want to believe or may deny or think they're ethereal or ideologies or whatever it's a very real thing when we behave treat something unlovingly it only causes harm and destruction and that is to our body. So, number two, we're numbed out. We don't like the reality we face. We don't like how the body feels. So we use things like chemical painkillers to get us through people t popping pills so they can go to the train, strapping up with knee braces, taking painkillers so they can get in their squat session that they've got planned, regardless of what the body's telling them, whether they want to do it or not, right? Two more natural painkillers, maybe weed and alcohol, but th these suppressants that help us avoid our reality ultimately like, and this is someone that i smoked weed for 10 years like i was avoiding my reality it helped me numb out in many ways or helped me to to use the substance to get more from something that that i felt was lacking inside without it you know so other ways that we're disconnecting from the body we're using anything to numb us chemically natural whatever it is anytime we numb ourselves that's a process of, of severing this mind-body connection Number three, social media, maybe more of an obvious one. There's a lot of um, emotional negativity associated with social media, a lack of gratitude for what we have. We're seeing these influencers are promoting things to us, telling us you've got to have this, or even if they're not saying it, that soul to soul, we're feeling it from them that we want to be able to look the way they look, have the lifestyle they have even move the way they move, right? There can be certain jealousy and things like that involved when we see this regularly helps us have a lack of appreciation for what we have lack of gratitude there and just brings up a lot of can bring up a lot of harshness and self-deprecation and self-hate can come with that so obviously things like social media can help destroy our own mind-body connection because we have this then negative self-view so number four unnatural lifestyles so things like not living seasonal the earth provides us with seasons season, a time to reap a time to sow and yet life for most of us in the western world is this constant grind nine to five five days a week at the very least for most of us it's not natural not the way nature provided it there's not these seasons i look at someone who lives a more creative lifestyle like a musician or someone they'll have a time when they create music they'll have this creative period then they'll have this kind of allow it to settle allow it to land allow the audience to enjoy it they get to rest then they go on tour and it's a very natural almost organic season of a creative person now obviously not everyone's life can follow that exact model but there is a way i believe we can all live with a more seasonal model in mind and so just a very way 
simple way that we're severing this mind-body connection is that we are forcing our body to do what we want day after day because we're in this robotic kind of calendar as well as that wearing things like uh, suits and ties especially a tie what is a tie doing it's disconnecting our mind quite physically literally from our body to wearing tight uncomfortable shoes I don't know how people wear shoes and suits all day long. I can barely wear it one day one day a year for a wedding. I find it uncomfortable. Even then, I've got some nice wide-toed shoes. Anyway, these things, people, to the clothes that we're wearing cause us to have to numb out to the body. My feet are uncomfortable, but I'm, you know, I'll take a coffee and I'll walk around and I'll be focused. I'll look at my phone. Then I'm, I'm numb to the sensations my body giving us. So things like the clothes we wear, another way that we naturally disconnect from our body. Five, people might not like this one, but sport in general, in most cases, people love a winner culturally. I don't think it's a loving thing. I don't think it's natural and innate in a human, but it's something through our injured selves desiring to prove ourselves. We love a winner. I still love a winner. I still want to win, have this desire in me, but I can recognize that it caused a lot of destruction in myself. It caused me to push through, push through a lot of injuries, does not resolve injuries. It just creates them to further worsen and create more havoc and a bigger mess for me to solve down the line so often when it comes to sport you know your blood's flowing you got adrenaline flowing you feel okay in the moment you cool down the next day you limp in the next week you limp in next game comes around the next week pop a painkiller or get warmed up you get through the game and then it's another seven days of discomfort not a loving thing to do and it's just comp compounding the issues to resolve in the, in the future so those are just a few of the things I've come to my head for problems let's go into some of the resolutions some approaches to training I think you should apply I've been applying to myself that have really improved my mind body connection and my relationship to my body so relationship to the body that's the word I like to use it's a relationship it should be a two-way conversation a dialogue there's ideas there's suggestions there's listening to responses it's gentle it's not rough there's there's the questioning the hmm, why do, what's the motivations for this you know it's a full on relationship with a person with with your girlfriend your partner it doesn't work if you're just commanding them to do the moment they don't do the thing you want to do you get angry you know you you come down on them you're creating issues for the future with a partner it's the same thing I want to look at the relationship with the body of course you know, you could look at the, the mind as almost the captain of the ship and the body of the ship, but one doesn't exist without the other. And if one abuses the other, it's a very limited time span. And so often injuries are coming up, illnesses, sicknesses are coming up. These are all signs. They're not coincidences. There's all a purpose and a reason for them. And the more sensitive you become, and I'll say that word, sensitivity is, gonna, is a huge part of the mind-body connection. So suggestion number one, one that I find really fun and that I've been embodying and uh, playing with more in the last few years balance wonderfully fun children are naturally drawn to it but it is not commonly nurtured past childhood apart from people who get into sports climbing parkour maybe gymnastics where balance is more you know used but naturally it's innate in us to want to balance but when we're an adult and we feel like I'm not good at balance and you see someone balance and it doesn't really make you want to be like them compared to a guy with big muscles or someone who can lift heavy or run really fast it's not as drawn but inside when you do some when you practice balance it's very very rewarding of a practice there are many ways to train balance for me i'm sitting on a swiss ball straight up like most gyms have a swiss ball kneeling on a swiss ball is a fun game sitting on a swiss ball is a fun game that works the body in a in a way that's very mind-body connection. You have to be present. But at the same time, you also get to just witness the body do its thing. And you're like, wow, this amazing machine is like, I'm not telling my hip to move that way and that knee to move that way and this shoulder to move that way to stay balanced. It's doing it itself. I'm just creating the environment, the space for it to do it. The only thing I have to do is program, obviously, the space and the setting, the difficulty for my body. Know where I'm at. Find that Goldilocks zone between easy and hard for my level and that's it that's why I suggest with the Swiss board kneeling and sitting most people can start there and that's within their Goldilocks zone and then there are other things you can do from that of course other ways to balance for free you can do at home headstands and handstands are natural ways we balance even going through a cartwheel you're passing through balance balancing on a rail balancing on a slack line fun little games 
trains the body both left and right side with sport there's a lot of one side dominance we kick with our right we hit with our right we whatever support with ourselves with our left with balance there is neutrality if there's one side dominance you're going to swing off so balance encourages neutrality left and right hemispheres of the brain all that kind of stuff goes off it's a wonderful thing one of my number one recommendations for mind body connection training when you're approaching the body and the mind too number two coordination games so this can be anything like my favorite suggestion if you know my channel rope flow is a coordination game where we where we're learning to coordinate and move the body the rope completes a circuit that we have to then work within so the left and right have to work together and there's again there's neutrality there's no left or right dominance something as well like juggling we have to learn to if i throw too heavy with my left and too little with my right it goes off balance so we learn the subtleties the nuances of fine tuning the 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 control of the muscles to be more precise rather than this one side dominance foot jugglings another great drill mind body connection the feet are furthest away from the brain from the mind so the amount of like pathways that has to go down the time it takes to get to the feet and back when we learn to control our feet we're developing physical development of the body of the mind muscle connection it's a wonderful thing even things like kettlebell juggling you can mix in some strength training with some precision some flips really fun number three suggestion and this one might be a bit left field from what i've said already bodybuilding now i'm not talking about your sam sulek style bodybuilding per se I'm talking about more this old school Maxic, Max Alding, uh, even Eugene Sandow type approach to bodybuilding where we're learning mind muscle connection. Now, let's let's have a little, you're at home, let's try this. Tense your bicep, squeeze your bicep. Now, are you squeezing your fist? Because I didn't say squeeze your fist, I said squeeze your bicep. Or is your shoulder tense? Is your tricep tense? When I say squeeze your bicep, can you just squeeze your bicep? Can you, or, or squeeze the whole thing, like squeeze your fist and your tricep and your shoulder, and then relax your fist, relax your shoulder, relax your tricep, so just the bicep is squeezed. This is mind-muscle connection. This is learning to be precise within the body. We can control a football, an object external, a rope, whatever it is. Can we control this precisely? Another one, tense your lats, if you can squeeze your lats. Now, is your, pack, is your pecs involved too? Are your traps involved? Can you tense your lats and relax those other muscles? That's a fun little drill to try. Mind-muscle connection is a very real thing. And I think when done with the right intentions, not to build mass muscles to impress the ladies or impress other men to be this pseudo-fake alpha, but, but actually to have developed the body is a beautiful thing. I have got a purpose, God-built connection to the muscles how much control do I have over that? I think it's, it's a wonderful practice when done with the right intentions. For me, that's like learning to play the individual notes of the body that make up the greater chords of movement. I do think though that alongside a practice like bodybuilding in this fashion, you need an outlet of how to put those notes into chords, how to move with the bigger picture. So things like calisthenics or parkour are great outlets on top of that. And as I mentioned, parkour, that is gonna be my next note to make here. Parkour and climbing, both incredible play games for developing mind-body connection. You're balancing, you're involved with your environment, you're having a relationship with the environment, a positive relationship with the environment. You need it to support you, you're grateful for it. Naturally, you just feel that. You're jumping with precision, you're climbing with certainty, there's just a lot going on with a practice like that. I don't need to make a whole, I could make, you know, a YouTube channel all about that in itself. But if you haven't tried bouldering and you're considering it, or um, go and consider it, try bouldering. It's a wonderful game of balance and strength and coordination. And yeah, really, I've been going recently again and I, I really love bouldering. Such a good practice. If you want to work on mind-body connection, get to a bouldering gym. Final main point from me on this is to go out in nature and explore and caveat on that, barefoot, especially barefoot, when we're barefoot on the ground, it in increases our awareness of self, increases our relationship to the environment. We're very aware of what we're stepping on. We're aware of our capabilities. We're aware of our speed. It, it humbles us to a pace. You know, if you want to go for a jog barefoot, it will wind you back down which you can then build up from a, a, a more healthy, like with longevity 
stance compared to cushioned shoes when you can put impact through your knees and all these issues start to flare up over time. Barefoot is like a baseline place to start from to build runnability from or just go for hikes barefoot. Take your shoes in your bag. I love doing this. I go for a hike barefoot, take my shoes in my bag. When my feet feel cooked, I put my shoes on. I'm, there's no ego in this. I'm not trying to prove that I can do a 10K hike barefoot or that I can run a half marathon barefoot. When they're cooked, they're cooked. That's okay. I put my shoes on. Next time, I'm going to be able to go further. The skin heals a little bit tougher. As I mentioned, climbing trees barefoot, an amazing way to work on your relationship with the body. It's kind of like tree yoga. Every branch you reach is a different stretch for your body. You can sit out and, you know, deep into the hips on a nice pistol, stretch out, tree climbing, another great practice. Just an honorable mention here, because I haven't said it, but creative expression in general with your body. So anything like dancing is amazing. You know, go to a dance class. I went to a ballet class earlier this year, really enjoyed it. Drawing is using the body and the mind in one way. When we get creative, we operate from the right hemisphere especially when we're using our body and being creative, then that's, you know, we're using the creative right hemispheres and the body to express ourselves. A lot of gym and sport is often very logical and pragmatic and not so creative. So maybe you're missing creative expression from your training and that could be parkour or dance or anything like that as well. And final mention on that is to create games. I love playing with my niece and nephew. Every Pretty much every time we hang out, we create a new game together. That's always involves some sort of the body or catching or throwing something precisely into something. Full summary then of my suggestions for your training for mind-body connection. Some type of balance practice that can be on a Swiss ball. I love a Swiss ball. Handstands, slack line, balance on one leg with your eyes closed, on a railing, bouldering, rock climbing is a form of balance. Parkour involves balance as well. Then coordination training, where we've got left and right hemispheres working together, left and right sides of the body, trying to work equally, no one side dominance. Climbing, where we have to use the hands and feet together. We're learning, we're keeping, you know, when we crawled, we, our hands and feet were in relationship, our timing was synced up. When we climb, we go back to this arms and feet working together as one unit. Dance, we're expressing ourselves with our, with our whole body, with our neck and everything, you know. However we move, Go out into nature without your shoes on, climbing trees, hiking mountains, and play. Play with kids, they will show you the way for sure. And so back to the report, there were a few other things that I just want to mention on that. Third world countries with warmer climates tend to be higher up. You look at the top of the list, mostly third world countries in nice climates. Something maybe about the simplicity of life being more aligned with our nature or God's intended purpose for how we're meant to exist on this earth, maybe a lack of unnatural stresses, lack of social medias and weird uh, unloving relationships that, that we kind of have a lot in the Western world. Also looking at this chart kind of at a distance and I love the way they've made it, colors on a chart like this, really lovely to look at, makes it really easy to read. But if you look at the worst categories overall tend to be uh, mood outlook and social self. And the best categories overall were adaptability and reliance and drive and motivation. And that's kind of interesting. It speaks sort of to the strength of the human will and our desire to just go on or possibly just our resistance to <laughs> ability to resist reality as you see everything else is kind of waning behind. Um, but overall, I laugh, kind of a pretty bleak reality check for the current state of mental health around the world. So as then, as the global theme of this uh, report was around mental health, I want to share a few of my thoughts. These are my opinions, my beliefs on the matter. You can take what works for you, discard what doesn't. Um, but what I think the biggest thing that's not understood with mental health that could really help people if they understood it is that the, the mind is, when we say mental health, people think the mind, this is superseded by what I believe is the soul. Now, when I say that, I just mean our emotional selves. So things like depression, we see as a mentalist issue, is caused by the repression of emotions. That's what I really believe that is repression of feelings like anger and sadness that we're in, either in denial of and we can use, you know, video games and stimulants and sugar and things like that to get through each day. But when we're resisting the tr our true feelings and we're in denial of them, it just creates this almost 
horrible stuck feeling and I've been there with depression where you just feel like there's no way out and every day is just groundhog day and it wasn't until I started to actually acknowledge my my own anger that was my a big I mean I've got other st- I've got grieves and sadnesses and stuff that I've not quite got to but anger is something I can speak on from experience when I got a punching bag and I spent all of this last winter gone through December putting on ang- angry soundtracks and when something would trigger me a you know an email that would trigger me message from my mum whatever it was getting into my anger owning it rather than projecting it at the people right you know writing back or shouting at my mum owning it and just taking it in that safe space expressing it my mental health I felt a weight lift from me so getting into those emotions has benefited my mental health because that is what was bringing my health mental health down so starting to understand that has helped me and even on top of that because it's all connected my physical health has improved too I'm able to eat a lot more relaxed I ate more pastries in the last year than I had in the last decade or even in the last six months I ate more pastries in the last decade my mental health my physical health has improved because of working with those emotions think what it, you know there is a connection with the organs and emotions and all this stuff it's all mind body soul one system there is science that proves that if you look in the right places mainstream they're not acknowledging it but look what the main look at the results we're getting from the mainstream's approach right now so looking at the emotional state and understanding that is a huge important part of mental health the body is like a physical representation of what's going on in the mind and the soul it's a map in many ways you know like prison break has the map on the back like your body is a map of what's really going on the physical issues if there's physical issues, there's a mental and spiritual cause. If you get injured, if you have an accident, a car accident, if you if you get cancer, it's not an accident. There's no coincidences. There's there's signs that we've been ignoring along the way, and we've been using numbing and, and suppressive tools, distractions to avoid them. And so these shouts have had to get louder. Things have had to get worse until we started to acknowledge them, and then. It's our personal responsibility to deal with them, not the doctor's responsibility, not society's responsibility, not our parents' responsibility. It, yes, cancer could be passed down ancestrally, genetically, there might be factors, but it's still a personal responsibility to resolve if you want to feel healthier and happier. And I know that's a big statement, and I'm not saying it easily, but it's but acknowledging that we're responsible for our mental health and that it, there is an emotional root to it can be really helpful. So the more sensitive we become to the body, the, the less we use tools to numb out from it, then the more truth we are, allow ourselves to see about it, the better relationship we can have. Then we can have a true baseline to start from rather than where we want to see ourselves as physically, where we want to believe we are, what we want to believe we're capable of, when we, or what we want to believe as humans is, so let me just say this, how messed up is the school system, right? How messed up, and I'm not saying that people that work as teachers aren't loving people doing the best they can, but as a system from top down, it's pretty like messed up. The health, the health system, right? Our approach to health, pretty messed up. Not saying that people that work there don't have the best intentions because they absolutely do and they're wonderful people that do more for other humans than I've ever done right but as a system the health system now the political system another thing that's messed up right sports how much drugs abuse is going on to make people better athletes how much money is involved in sports all of these are messed up the fitness industry is equally messed up our approach to fitness we want to think that's all messed up but you know I go to the gym and I lift my weights and this isn't isn't is, is the right approach it's equally as far off the true intention for us as humans as the rest of, of, of the other systems. What I'm offering today is some, I'm not saying I've got the golden answers, but playing with things like balance and climbing and fun games and not having one side dominance, these are real keys to approaching health and fitness and a mind-body connection from a more organic, holistic, natural, God-willed, I mean, that's a big statement to make, I don't know, you know, I feel it is, 
more of a god world intention than the current approach to times numbers plates beating people winning all this kind of approach the human body is a beautiful gift it's the only thing you are physically born with and you only get one getting to know it listen to it love it is a journey and in a modern world where we just want to use everything we want to use devices use tools use people we just want to use our body using isn't love working together is love you want to learn to work with the body and if you want to improve your mind body connection you have to stop trying to use it and make it work for you instead extend an olive branch slow down start paying attention allowing intending for sensitivity to increase and start seeing if you can work with it thanks for watching if you want to learn more from me and my approach to health and fitness and how to do it in a more nurturing and self-loving way, then check out the schoolofbiomechanics.com or link in the description below. God bless.